I hated the American dream. If you're poor, you'll always be poor. It's passed down genetically. There are kids, by virtue of where they're born, are trapped in poverty. People get in money problems because of behaviors. The screams woke me up. Those children are often going to find it difficult to build relationships. I saw my dad with his big cowboy belt hurting my sister. My mother trying to interfere, get between them. I scurried underneath a tall green chair, shaking, not wanting to be seen. I was terrified. My father looked over and his eyes connected with mine. I knew what was going to happen. He was going to beat me next. And for whatever reason, he stopped and he walked away. Within a few days, my mom decided to pack up our family and move 150 miles away, not for her own security, but for the safety of her family. She got a job making salads for $1.25 an hour. I hated the American dream. The kids who had the perfect house, the model mother and dad, the perfect clothes, the perfect haircut, I hated it. I, I hated it because I didn't have it. I wanted to destroy that scene. I went to a powder puff football game. I bought two dozen eggs and I went out there and I decided I'm gonna throw eggs at these girls while they're playing in the powder puff football game. After launching a couple eggs, some of the parents started to yell at me, trying to talk to me. I wouldn't listen to them. I was a juvenile delinquent. I didn't need to listen to anyone. I felt a tap on my shoulder and I turned around. There stood six foot six, 280 pound Ryan. That's all I remember. I woke up a few minutes later. I hurt to breathe. My ribs were broke. My nose was displaced. My eye was black and shut. And not one of those parents would help me. And it occurred to me the cruel karma lesson. I had done a lot of bad right then. I crawled three blocks home, pushed in our front door, and my mom was sitting there watching TV, and she looked at me in horror and screamed. That led to a very lengthy conversation about the fact that I'd not been going to school, the fact that I'd been racing cars. And I told her, I think this is a sign for my life to change. My mother made the decision she was going to send me to a private Catholic school. So we moved 100 miles away to change my life. And one night, my mom came home. She walked in the door. She said, we have no money. And I like a smart aleck teenager, I said, well, what's new? We never have any money. And she didn't spar with me like she normally did. She walked quietly over to this little small refrigerator in our kitchen. And she turned to me and said, I'm going to have to steal some food from work for us to eat for the next two weeks. And not missing a beat, well, I said, well, steal some steaks, mom. And she walked over and slapped me across the face. And she said, I've never stole anything in my life. This is a dire situation. I'm going to steal potatoes. And we're going to have enough potatoes to make potato soup to eat for the next two weeks. And she says, I want you to remember this moment. I know you are bound for greatness. But never, ever forget this moment. Find the power in this, son. Find the power in this moment. In the darkest of times, you have to stop. Take a time out. Make sense of the things that have happened to you in your life. The pain, the struggle, the poverty. How do you make those things meaningful, that are positive. We paid back those potatoes with interest. 
but my mom gave me a really unusual gift. The perseverance that I gained through that potato soup story allowed me to go on to start my own company. It's allowed me to have two phenomenal children. It taught me the values and the ethics that I needed to have both in my company and in my family. We created the Potato Soup Foundation and it's helped hundreds of people. No one in my life will ever go hungry again. No one will ever have to steal potatoes again. My mom did that. My mom was a very positive force for the negative things that happened to our life. We use those things as rocket fuel to propel us to the future, to give new generations hope. Sometimes when you go through these negative events, they seem such a horrific part of your life. But the key, the key is looking back on the pain of your life and seeing how do I let this motivate me for a better future? Use it as fuel to propel you forward. Find the power in this moment.